Good evening. My guest tonight is Matt Greer. Matt is running for the vice presidency spot for CWA Local 3808. Now, I wouldn't call this a David versus Goliath story, but Matt certainly is the underdog going into this election. He doesn't have the time in or the experience that his opponent has. However, he feels that now is the time for the change and he is the man for the job. I'm Yavin4, stay tuned, we're going to find out why him, why now, and why you need to know. Well Matt, no sense beating around the bush, why you? Why should you be vice president? Good question Yavin. Uh, I feel like I'm the best person for the job uh, between myself and Mr. Zuniga, the two people that are running for the position. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like my desire to develop the stewards and the membership uh, through transparency. Uh, I feel like uh, I have ability to do that, to communicate to the membership. Uh, you know, one thing uh, during this campaign, I've, I've gotten a chance to talk to a lot of our members, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of different job titles. Uh, and I've heard tons of different stories. Uh, and uh, I've gotten several compliments, which humbles me. Um, now, I've, when you say several different job titles, I mean, like, what do you mean? Like, you've been talking to, like, wire techs? And... Well, we have digital techs, we have system techs, we have wire technicians, we have DTV technicians, uh, on DTV only technicians that are wire technicians. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, OPTs, construction, we have maintenance, um, uh, FTs, facility technicians, and so across the spectrum on the outside. Uh, I've talked to several different members on several different areas, mm -hmm. uh, and to be honest with you, uh, it's it's kind of frustrating for me uh, to talk to those people and hear the things I hear, and to realize that maybe nobody's talked to them before. Like I mean, what? What are you hearing? Well, I hear simple things like, well, we've, nobody's ever talked to me from the union before. Or, mm -hmm. I don't see people from the union, and you know, one thing that I do uh, as uh, National Plan Area Rep, mm -hmm. uh, any day that I'm handling uh, union business, or I take a union day to handle grievances or paperwork or whatnot, I always start my day off at a work center. Uh, I feel like that's important. Uh, our president, uh, Josh Foster, uh, has even uh, started the same thing, where he's going to work centers uh, now, more so than previous uh, leaders of our local. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's important. I hear that from members. I hear different things. I hear, you know, well, you know, I thought about dropping out, man. I appreciate you calling me, telling me about this election. You know, nobody's told me anything about it. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, they hear me out. They, they listen. Uh, they ask questions, uh, which is great. That, that's, you know, questions. Asking questions means that you're interested. You want to know. You want to be engaged. You're thirsty for that information, similar to myself, um, and which leads me here uh, running for vice president. I'm thirsty for that knowledge. I'm thirsty for the experience, and I'm ready to take on the challenge. So you're hearing from people that they don't even know that there's an election coming up? That's great. Yes, sir. Really? Yeah. Was a breakdown in communication? Uh, the union hall keeps memberships information on file. Uh, people move uh, or, or whatnot. People use wrong address, a PO box or whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those come back. Some of those don't. Uh, we do post it on the website. Not everybody goes to the website. We do post it on the social media as well. Not everybody follows the local on social media. Um, so yeah, there is there is a breakdown in communication there. Uh, you know, I I feel like uh, you know. Again, as the National Plan Area Rep, I, I communicate with my stewards. Uh, I've let them know um, the tree, as I refer to it as, work says the information funnel is down. Uh, and it ultimately gets to the work center, which gets to the employee or the technician. So you're actually out talking to people? I have talked and met with most of our outside technicians, yes, sir. Is that uncommon for uh, uh, someone to go out and talk to people? I mean, it seems like a lot of people don't know what's going on. Uh, well, as an organizer, a lot of people don't know I'm an organizer as well. I've been an organizer for several years. Uh, I have been going around to different work centers um, for years, um, per se. I've been to mobility centers. I've been to the Bat Building. I've been to, you know, the Murfreesboro Yard down there, the, um, you know, the Gallatin Yard. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been to several different yards and talked to members. I, I don't think I've been to every single yard, but I've been to at least 90, 95% of the yards that we have uh, of our local. Some of those yards I visited on my own personal time on my off day. Really? Um, just to meet with members, talk to members, introduce myself. I feel like that's important. You know, uh, you ask a question, why me? You know, I'll just give you a small example. Jose uh, put flyers on people's cards, uh, mm -hmm. cars a couple weeks ago from Gallatin. I was getting pictures for some of the people down there. I really? Said, Man, this guy, he put this about shirt. And my question to those guys was, have you ever met Jose? Did Jose ever come with you and talk to you? Well, no. The answer was, no, I, I don't know him. I just got this flyer in my car. So I says to myself, he's expecting a vote just by putting a flyer on someone's car? Like, man, how simple and nice would that be if I could just go around putting things in people's mailboxes on their cars and be like, hey, I'm going to win this election. No, it's mine. It's mine to lose. 
uh, I don't look at it like that. Yeah. I look at it as our membership's hungry, our membership's got a desire, and I want to talk to people and engage in people. People, if I expect them to vote for me, I, I expect them to want to know me or, or want to know something about me, yeah. which is completely fair, and I'm an open book. I'll answer any question anybody has uh, about myself or my intentions uh, with the union, but no problem. Okay, well, what about those that are watching this video right now and they're thinking to themselves, why now? Uh, Matt doesn't have the experience that his opponent has, so why should uh, why should somebody look past your lack of experience and why is now the opportunity, why is now the time for you to run for vice president? Well, that's, that's, that's a good question. I've actually gotten that question. Um, I can't doubt that Jose's got the more experience than me. He's been mm -hmm. with the union a long time. He's been with the company a long time. Uh, I've only been with the company six years. That's it? Uh, that's six it. Years. Six years. That's it. I started off with DirecTV as a legacy technician. Um, we, they, had a, uh, they sold the company off uh, to AT&T, mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, quickly got visits from the union. I signed a blue card at first chance mm -hmm. uh, and was actually approached about being a steward. Uh, it didn't take long for me to realize that that was probably a great opportunity for me uh, to uh, enhance my career and I also be able to help people. Uh, and so I took advantage of that. Uh, I'm also an organizer and a mobilizer. So mm -hmm. although my experience with the company and experience with the union is relatively short in the grand scheme of things, especially when you consider it against someone like Jose, um, I do I do know what I'm doing. I've been around a lot. Uh, I've handled tons of grievances from tons of different job titles, from core to wire technician to DTV. Uh, and uh, I feel like my desire uh, to learn and develop people just far exceeds that of uh, anyone that's experienced. So you're hungry? I'm very hungry. I feel like our membership's hungry and I feel like our membership should have a say in everything that our local does. You know, our members pay dues, they pay their hard-earned money, yeah. and they should have a say, you know, which is why the selection is important. That, that vote is their say in this particular situation, but there's a lot of things that come up at times where our local has a voice, whether it be our president lets that voice be heard at a convention or at a, you know, conference call or whatever, something as simple as that, but our members should know about these things and should put, put their uh, best foot forward to make sure that their voice is being heard. And that's something that I would like to see change within our local. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm coming from DirecTV as a wire technician. There was plenty of times where I had something to say. I had an opinion about something and I wanted to get that out there. I felt like my complaints or concerns fell on deaf ears. In fact, uh, I recall being told by several people uh, and, and Jose being one of them that, you know, we were just crybabies. You know, because we were complaining about our working conditions. Hmm. And, and I get it. You know, sometimes some people, including myself, sometimes I cry and I whine about things that probably can't a lot be done about. And I get that. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot of times where members have legit complaints and they need to be heard, at, you know, and they need to be dealt with in an appropriate manner. You know, I, I take all my members very seriously. I depend on my members uh, equally. Okay. Well, that brings up my next point. So why should people vote for you? I mean, the, was it an organization, members? I mean, why should people vote for you? Well, you know, our locals ran uh, before the previous election uh, seven months ago. Our local has ran, uh, at least in my opinion, I think a lot of other people's opinion, from what I can tell by talking to most people, uh, as like an organization, like a corporation. You know, you had the president, and you had the executive vice president, uh, and then you had the uh, vice president, and they just kind of wanted to do things their own way. They didn't really, you know, I don't want to say they didn't care about the membership, because I don't think that that would be accurate, but they mm -hmm. just kind of ran the local um, by a, you know, well, the members don't know, and we're going to do this, and they felt like people liked that, you know. It doesn't seem very union. I, I, I agree, and so I, I like, and, I, I, and I've been getting this word out to a lot of our members saying, listen, you know, come to these meetings, the first Tuesday of every month, come to the meetings, let your voice be heard. Yeah, sometimes you come to a meeting, you know, and it, it may not seem like the most exciting thing you ever attended that mm -hmm. week, but it's all important information that needs to be heard and needs to be handed out by everybody. And so, you know, and also the members, they vote sometimes. There's issues that come up in these union meetings. And if there's not a quorum and there's not enough members there to have a quorum, uh, then the membership doesn't have a say in that vote. It goes directly to the e-board, which... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to me, I would want, I would rather see the membership have a say in it. Whether I agree with it personally or not, it doesn't matter. I'm a part of a union just as well as all of our other members. And uh, I feel like if everybody lets their voice be heard, they'll notice the big change that will happen. So you want more engagement. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. 100%. So from, you want the members, members. Yes. To be more engaged. Yes. Our members, to our stewardship, to even our officers, right down to myself. You know, I, I want as many people, you know, there's a lot of people from talking to a lot of members, there's a lot of people that may have wanted to be a steward or may have wanted to get involved somehow. And they let they let that 
get out. They let, they told Jose or they told someone else that was an officer or, or a leadership role in our local at that time, and they never heard anything back. Hmm. Uh, they didn't they didn't know what had happened to the their interest, and so I'm learning this because I'm calling them uh, to talk to them, to meet them, uh, to answer any questions they have. And they go, you know, man, it's it's crazy. You know, I'm glad somebody finally reached out to me. You know, but and I said, have you ever thought about being a steward? You know, and I said, well, yeah, and I asked Jose, but it didn't get nowhere, and you know, this and that. And I'm like, man, that's sad because we need all the people that want to be engaged to be engaged. Yeah. It's hard enough to get people to want to be engaged. And if you have that desire naturally yeah. and you want to be a part of it and you want to help it, because this is a cause. This is bigger than me. This yeah. is bigger than any one member. Mm. This is a whole local. Our local 3808 is one of the biggest locals in District 3. And I feel like that's a large voice. You know, and when you when you have District 3, the whole Southeast, right? Yeah. That's a large portion of uh, of of the country, that's a large representation right there, and so uh, I feel like our members should have a say, and I feel like most of them do want to have a say. They just need that transparency. They need someone to kind of meet them halfway. Well, it sounds like I know we've already talked about experience and and all that stuff, but it sounds like uh, gosh, I don't want to say that you've been on like the bad side, but it seems like you've been on the other side, and you just ready for change. Yeah, I mean, you know, I felt like uh, when I came in at Direct TV, uh, mm-hmm. we became in the addendum. We realized that we were <laughs> that we were wire technicians in the addendum. Um, I realized very quickly that. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, did... addendum. What do you mean addendum? Addendum. Uh, wire technicians are addendum to the core contract, starting on page three twenty three. Uh, I, uh, I felt like in order for me to try to make a change to anything, mm-hmm. I felt like the best thing I can do is just get involved. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why I ran for a national plan area rep. That's why I'm running for vice president is to get involved, be a voice, let the member's voice be heard through me. Yeah. So have you needed the union's help before? I mean, is there a time, um, is there a time that you can think of where like, gosh, I mean, it just would have been something terrible would have happened if the union hadn't been there for you uh yeah i mean the first thing that comes to mind is uh and it's okay <laughs> you can laugh uh you can laugh too it's cool uh i, I share the story sometimes in new our orientation but uh yeah the first thing that comes to mind is the time i got suspended for uh, being attacked by yellow jackets you got suspended for being attacked by yellow jackets yeah that's the short version so what had happened was <laughs> i'll just kind of tell you i was on a job and uh, I was walking back to my van, and I had walked underneath this tree. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, I got stung. And uh, I, I took off. I'm allergic to wasps, by the way. Ah, and so okay. uh, I wound up getting swarmed. They mm-hmm. they stung me 11 times. I wound up going to the hospital in the ambulance. Yeah. And uh, I got suspended one day for that. Wait, so you, did you have to leave early? I did. Uh, that was around 1 o'clock, I think, 1-ish. Oh, no kidding. Uh, and I, that was on a Thursday. And that Friday, I was out on workers' comp because mm-hmm. I was on steroids and I was on Benadryl, and uh, let me tell you, I didn't know you could feel like I had been on a hangover on Benadryl, hmm. but uh, so that Friday, I was out on um, uh, workers' comp, and I was off Saturday. That was my CW that particular weekend. Uh, I came back to work and was working for about a week or so, and I got pulled into the office by my manager at the time, who was mm-hmm. a DTV manager, yeah. who suspended me for one day, uh, and so I filed a grievance on that, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is why the grievance process exists. Um, and Jose Zuniga was actually my steward in this particular situation. No kidding. Yes, sir. And, uh, so what happened was in this particular situation was we couldn't work anything out on the first level. Mm -hmm. We went to panel, uh, and the panel process, Jose Zuniga was my representative and Chris Dalton was representing the company. What's the, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. What's the panel process? A panel process is what you get to if you can't work out an agreement on the first level. Okay. So once you file a grievance, um, you meet with your first level manager and your steward, uh, representative, and if you can't work something out there, come to a mutual agreement, understanding, mm-hmm. uh, then it goes to the second level, which is the panel process. Okay, so then what happened after you went to panel? Uh, the panel process was there was a guy in front of me uh, who had a panel going on, and then when he got done, then I got called into the room, and Jose, again, was my representative. Uh, him and Chris Dalton, uh, for whatever reason, uh, they don't like each other, can't get along professionally mm-hmm. or, or whatnot. Um, they had already, it was kind of awkward. I walked, went in the room, walked in there, sit down, and you could kind of feel the tension in the room between the two. And as soon as they started talking about my case, it, it went up and went straight down. There was no debate. There was no nothing. It was because of Jose's relationship with Mr. Dalling, I believe, uh, mm-hmm. is the reason why there couldn't be anything worked out. I mean, a guy gets stung by a yellow jacket and goes to the hospital and you suspend me. 
you know, that's not right no matter how you slice that. Yeah. Uh, that would piss me off if I was representing any of my members that went through a similar situation. So naturally, I'm going through the situation myself. Naturally, I was pissed off. Yeah. Uh, so uh, at the end of the day, that, that grievance went up to the state level. Uh, and uh, our state rep at the time, thankfully, uh, was able to work it out with the uh, company state rep. And what they did was they took that uh, punishment off my record. Really? And they paid me back for that day that I missed from being suspended. Okay, so you, you, you got suspended. You fought it. The union was there. They helped you, and you ended up getting paid for that day. Yes, sir. Something that was completely out of your hands, that had the union not been able to help you, what would have happened? Uh, that would have been on my record for three years. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to transfer. I wouldn't be able to promote. Uh, and also, I would have been without that one day's pay. Hmm. Yeah. It's a lot to lose just for simply not filing a group. And it sounds like you, you know, you've gone through this, so you're familiar with the whole process. I, you know, unfortunately, uh, I've been a part of the, uh, I've been a grievant, <laughs> and I've been a representative. Uh, I've been on both sides of the aisle several times, uh, which goes back to what you were saying about experience. You know, I, I you know, I hadn't been with the company 30 years. Uh, mm -hmm. I hadn't been a uh, an officer in a union for eight or or 10, uh, but I do have tons of experience as far as dealing with grievances, uh, uh, being representative on, uh, you know, every every job title. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it worked out for you. Thank I know you. I wouldn't want to be stung by bees. <laughs> it, it was scary at the moment, but I tell you what, looking back on it, it's it's good to laugh at. But it was yeah. definitely scary at the time. So, <laughs> what is your three-year plan? Well, it's quite simple. My three-year plan is to work directly with the area reps and the stewards uh, to develop the stewards to empower the stewards. Uh, remember, when we lose our fear, they lose their power. They being the company, we being us. Uh, my plan is simple is work with all the membership specifically the stewards and the area reps to have stewardship meetings monthly uh, to further broaden the knowledge uh, of our union uh, to help the members feel engaged empowered let their voice be heard through me well that's all the time we have for today i'd like to thank my guest matt greer um you know if you like what matt has to say i know i've said this a few times if you like what he has to say if you want to vote for matt then you got to go out and do it you got to rock the vote where do people go to vote matt well uh it starts tomorrow uh it's gonna be june 7th uh in murfreesboro at the sports com at 2310 memorial boulevard and that's between 3 p.m and 7 p.m Again, that starts tomorrow, uh, and then the very next day on the 8th, we're going to be at the local Union Hall at 2911 Elm Hill Pike. Uh, that's going to start at 7 a.m. and end at 7 p.m. So for guys that work around the uh, local area there, they can drive by before work and get their vote in. Uh, if they want to come in after work, that's great. Anybody that comes there is listening to this message. There's a members meeting that night. Mm -hmm. uh, that starts at 7, which is why the voting ends at 7. So feel free to stay around, uh, get you something to eat, and... Uh, socialize uh, obviously keeping your social distance but uh, socialize with other members and um, you know uh, the very next day is going to be the ninth uh, that's going to be in Lebanon at the Jimmy Floyd Center uh, that's at 511 North Castle Heights that's going to be from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. as, PM as well uh, and then the Thursday on the 10th is going to be in Clarksville that's at the Crow Recreational Center and that's 211 Richview Road and that's going to be from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. So that one's open later. Uh, and then the very next night, the last night of the election is on Friday. That's on the 11th, June 11th at Dixon. That's at the Dixon Housing Authority. Uh, it's at 1202 East Walnut Street, and that's going to be from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. That is the last night of the election. The results will be announced uh, shortly after 7 p.m., and we will know if uh, we made history or not. Well, there you go. Well, you know what to do. You know how to do it. You know where to do it. Uh, one more time, I'd like to thank my guest, Matt Greer, and for all my fans out there, good night and good luck. Stronger together. <laughs>